Lo, by Charles Hoyfort, Part 2, Chapter 22a, that, in the summer of 1880, some other world, or whatever we'll call it, after a period of hard luck, cheered up, and cast off its despairs, which came to this earth, where there is always room for still more melancholy in the long, black, funeral processions. August 18th, 1880, people near the waterfront of Havre, France, saw the arrival of a gloom. Sails in the harbour of Havre suddenly turned black. But, like every other gloom, this one alternated with alleviations. The sails flipped white. There was a flutter of black and white. Then enormous numbers of the units of these emotions were falling into the streets of Havre. They were long, black flies. In an editorial in the London Daily Telegraph, August 21st, it is said that this mysterious appearance of flies at Havre was a puzzle of the most mysterious kind. These flies had come down from a point over the English Channel. They had not come from England. I have searched widely in continental publications, and there is no findable record of any observation upon this vast swarm of flies until it came down from the sky over the English Channel. Pilot boats, returning to Havre, came in black with them. See the journal Dead to Bats, Paris, August 20th, that they were exhausted flies, which fell when touched and could not move when picked up, or they may have been chilled into torpidity. Presumably there were survivors, but most of these helpless flies fell into the water, and the swarm, as a swarm, perished. If this is a puzzle of the most mysterious kind, I am going to be baffled for a description as we go along. I don't know what comes after the superlative. Three days later, another vast swarm of long, black flies appeared somewhere else. Just how much we're going to be puzzled by more than the most mysterious depends upon how far this other place was from Hover. See the New York Times, September 8th, that, upon August 21st, a cloud of long, black flies, occupying 20 minutes in passing, had appeared at East Pictou, Nova Scotia. Halifax Citizen, August 21st, that they had passed Lismore, flying low, some of them appearing to fall into the water. Upon the 2nd of September, another swarm came down from the sky. It appeared suddenly, at one place, and there is no findable record that it was seen anywhere else, over land or water of this earth. It is told of, in the Entomologist's Monthly Magazine, November, 1880, off the coast of Norfolk, England, an avalanche that overwhelmed the schooner, millions upon millions of flies. The sailors were forced to take shelter, and it was five hours before they could return to the decks. The air became clear about 4 p.m., when the flies were thrown overboard by shovelfuls and the remainder were washed off the decks by buckets of water and brooms. It was another appearance of exhausted, or torpid, flies. Scientific American, Volume 43, page 193, on the afternoon of Saturday, September 4th, the steamboat Martin encountered, on the Hudson River, between New Hamburg and Newburgh, a vast cloud of flies. It reached southward, from shore to shore, as far as the eye could reach, and resembled a drift of black snow. The insects were flying northward, as thick as snowflakes driven by a strong wind. They were long, black flies. Halifax Citizen, September 7th, that, upon the 5th of September, a compact cloud of flies, occupying half an hour in passing, had appeared at Guysborough, Nova Scotia, hosts of them falling into the water. I think that crowd of flies was not the same as the Hudson River crowd, even though that was flying northward. So I think, because the flies of Guysboro, like the flies of Hover, came as if from a point over the ocean. They came from the east, Brooklyn Eagle, September 7th.